to being excited to be able to preach on the person of Gideon. God has placed Gideon in my spirit for many weeks now, and Gideon didn't quite seem to match with the Christmas story and the birth of Christ. And yet, I can't help but believe that the way in which God reveals God's self to Gideon has a lot to do with the way many of us may feel on this last Sunday in December of 2019. I don't know about you, but there is a movement that seems to always happen at this time of year. We begin to reflect on the year that is coming to a close and turn our eyes to what is yet to come for 2020. As I've listened to people stand in this moment of transition, I've heard people say, the tears that I cried in 2019 will be the seeds that are planted for blessing in 2020, declaring that even if there was struggle and suffering this year, that they're going to turn that to God, that God would produce new fruit in them in 2020. I've heard others go through a sequence of declaring that God has been good. I don't know if you've encountered anyone like this, but despite whatever the year has brought, they stand on the eve of a new year declaring that God has been the God that has brought them out of Egypt, that God is the God who has freed them from their sins, that God has provided them with all that they needed this year, that God has walked with them. Some people on the eve of moving from one year to the next, take a moment to make a New Year's declaration. I have to confess to you that in my family, they tend to make fun of me in this practice of making New Year's resolutions. I remember one year we sat all around the dinner table making New Year's declarations. Everybody has a line and it comes to me and I just kept talking. And I talked and I talked and I talked and I remember somebody around the dinner table finally said, that's great, Jen. If you can remember what you're going to do in the next year, I pray that God leads you to that place. It made me think of a woman who posted on her Facebook about 15 things that she needed to do for 2020, one of which was to enroll all four children that she has in sports. I thought, sweetheart, if you're going to put all your children in sports, you can erase the remaining 14 things you want to do because that's all you will do in 2020 is transport your children to sports. Raise your hand if you've ever made so many New Year's declarations you couldn't remember them by the time you got to January 15th, right? It's part of this way in which we try to mark the passing from one year to the next. But if we look at this story of Gideon, it's remarkable to me because Gideon and the people of Israel are in a place in which they don't want to be. Maybe in the end of 2019, there are places and parts of your life that are not as you want. Raise your hand if that might be true. Things that are there that you wish were not as they are. And as Gideon and the people of Israel suffered under the hands of the Midianites, God began to speak to them in a way that led them to a new place. But it wasn't an acute declaration or an immediate New Year's resolution. It was a process of walking with God. And so today I want us to look at that process and how it might parallel to our own lives. If you go back to the Judges scripture, and I really do want you to open your Bibles again to Judges 6. Again, it's on page 222 of the Old Testament of your pew Bibles. Say amen when you're with me. 
Okay, Sandy and I are going to read this, and I'm going to wait for the rest. Page 222 of the Old Testament of your pew Bibles. Judges 6. It begins by saying the Israelites did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian for seven years. Now, I don't know about you, but there are places in my life where I actually know that God has said, you want to go there? I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Go ahead and walk into the land of Midian. Go ahead and walk away from who I... Go ahead if that is where you think you need to go. But like everything that draws us away from God, in the moment that we're walking towards the next shiny thing, we're not aware of the fact that the further we walk and the deeper we get in, the longer the journey to get out, and we find ourselves seven years later... Lord, I didn't want to be here. Seven is one of those perfect numbers in Scripture. The Israelites were given into the hand of the Midianites for seven years. And the hand of the Midianites prevailed over Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites provided for themselves hiding places in the mountains and caves and strongholds. For whenever the Israelites put in seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. You ever felt like your enemies just keep robbing the first fruits of the seeds that you plant? You can see it grow, and all of a sudden it's gone. And you ask, Lord, why? Seven years. It just gets taken away. They would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the land as far as the neighborhood of Gaza and leave no sustenance in Israel, no sheep or ox or donkey. Who feels like your sustenance is lacking? For they and their livestock would come up and they would even bring their tents as thick as locusts. Neither they nor their camels could be counted. So they wasted the land as they came in. Thus Israel was greatly impoverished. Whether it's your spiritual life that feels as dry as a desert. Whether it's your relationships that feel like they lack the connection and the spark. Whether it's your finances. Whether it's your work for the Lord. Is there some place at the end of 2019 that is truly impoverished because you have followed your own way? Israel was greatly impoverished because of Midian, and the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. Now, what do you think happens when they cry out to God for help? This is where we get the story so wrong. When we cry out to God for help at the end of 2019, moving into 2020, what do we think God's going to do? Everybody's talking so quiet. What do we think God is going to do? Now, Denise thinks God is going to snap God's fingers and make 2020 all better. Okay? That's one way. Just do it, Lord, and do it fast, and don't require anything of me. What else do we sometimes convince ourselves God is going to do? I'm sorry? What we want. That God's going to take a laundry list. Here, Lord, is what I want you to do to the Midianites and what I want to happen to my fields and what I want 2020 to look like. If you are taking requests, Lord, here it is, sir. And sometimes we're so tired, we just don't even want to ask. God's not going to do anything. We're so wayward, we're so impoverished, We're so under the control of others. God can't do a thing with where we are. Verse 7, when the Israelites cried to the Lord on account of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites and said to them, how many times have you cried out to God and God sent somebody? It's interesting to me that God responds to the cries of the people Not by snapping God's fingers, not by taking a laundry list of our requests, not by turning his back and say, you evil and wayward people, but God responds by saying, I'm going to send you someone to speak the truth 
in the middle of your tiredness and your need. And he said to them, listen to what God says. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery, and I delivered you from the hand of all the Egyptians and from the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not pay reverence to the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live. God says, let me remind you who I am. Let me remind you of who I have been in your life, of how you have ended in the place that you are. Let me tell you once again that any peace in your heart is there because of my spirit. Any change you've made and any freedom you've found has come because I have come to set you free. Any encounter you've had with God has come because I am a God who is with you, who seeks after you. I am the Lord your God who led you out of Egypt. Raise your hand if you know of one thing that God has done in your life that is worth remembering. That's who I am, God says. Just like you ask for freedom from the Midianites now, I'm the one who freed you from the Egyptians before. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not pay reverence to the gods of the Amorites in whose land you may live, but you have not given heed to my voice. Is there some place in 2019 you know you haven't listened? Just me. You know you haven't listened. God set us up and you know you didn't listen. And we expect God to say, you fool. I've done it once. I'm not going to do it again. Instead, in verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizarite, as his son Gideon was be beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared with him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Touch your neighbor and say, You mighty warrior. And it feels kind of ridiculous, right? You want to touch the person back and say, Mighty I am not, and ready for battle I do not fear. God didn't ask what you feel. The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Gideon answered. I love Gideon's answer. What does Gideon say? But sir, if the Lord is with us, what's his question? The Lord is with us. Why has all of this happened? Why everything that I am holding? Why? If you're the one who can free me from the Midianites, if you have brought me out of slavery, if you are the God who is with me, why is all of this happening? Raise your hand if you've ever asked the Gideon question. Why? Why is this happening, God? And where are all his wonderful deeds where is this power, Lord, that we keep reading about? Where is all that our ancestors recounted to us saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has cast us off and given us into the hand of Midian. Then the Lord turned to Gideon and said, go in this might of yours and deliver Israel and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian, and God says, as if to make it more specific, I hereby, what does he say? Commission you. I send you out. I call you. I compel you. I am saying, declares the Lord your God, that into 2020 you will go, whether you feel like a mighty warrior or not, you will go and I send you with purpose with power, because you are far stronger than you ever imagined. Isn't it Marion Williamson who says, our greatest fear is not that we are weak, it is that we are strong beyond our wildest imagination. Go in your might, God says. Go in all that I have given you, and go forth to be what the people of Israel need. 
And the powerful part about this is this is actually the Christmas story. It is the same theme of fragility and humanness and brokenness and need and God sending out light in the midst of darkness and those who are commissioned saying, I am not qualified. Until the young girl Mary finally says, I don't understand why you are talking to me. But here I am a servant of the Lord. May it be with me according to your word. Gideon goes on. He says, but sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest and I am the least in my family. Does that not sound like the fact that Jesus the Christ was born in Bethlehem, this tiny remote village? If you've been to the Holy Land, you know the walls of the city of Jerusalem rise up as if they were declarations of God's protection. But Bethlehem is this teeny tiny out there city and there is where Jesus the Christ is born to an unassuming 12-year-old girl. And a man who just wants to live righteous and not be interrupted as he follows the rules. That's my theory about Joseph. Joseph, you know people like this? Joseph just wants to follow the rules. Tell me how life is supposed to go. I will do everything you ask. And because I am faithful in following the rules, I'll get all that I'm supposed to get. All that the good guys receive. Except his young... <laughs> Engaged woman Mary ends up pregnant by God and an angel shows up and life can never be the same. Like Gideon trying to press out at the wine press that he would hide some of the harvest from the Midianites that they would have something to live on. And an angel of the Lord comes and sits with him. I also love the fact that the angel sits with him. It makes me think of Sophia, my daughter. If I'm moving around and I am uh, occupied in other things, she'll call my attention and I'll come over to her and she'll pat the, the sofa next to her. No, 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 sit down, mommy. Wait, but I'm right, I'm right here. Tell me what you, no, 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 sit down. The angel of the Lord sat down next to Gideon sat down next to Gideon long enough to be in dialogue and relationship, long enough to declare that not only will God be with you when you go against the Midianites, but I'm with you now. Right now, at the end of 2018, what if the angel of the Lord is sitting beside you saying, I am commissioning you, you mighty warrior. The world is waiting for what I'm asking of you. Gideon says in verse 17, Then he said to me, If now I have found favor with you, then show me a sign that it is you who speak with me. This is not the Virgin Mary. This is not the song that says, Here I am, may it be with me according to your word. Gideon says, What? Lord, I, I don't know. I need a sign. Raise your hand if you've ever asked for a sign. I need a sign. And I love that Gideon says, do not depart from here until I come. Have you ever told God, look, you wait here, Lord. I'm going to go get something and I'll be back. That's exactly what Gideon does. You stay here. Do not depart. Let me go get this fleece of mine. I'm going to come back and you need to show me a sign. And what does our God do? The angel of the Lord sits and waits. And actually says, the angel of the Lord said, I will stay until you return. I'll stay until you return, Denise. I'll stay until you return, Donna. I'll stay until you return, Renuka. I'll stay until you return, Rosalind. I'll stay until you return, Cecilia. I'll wait here, God says. Because this next chapter, I need you. You have been commissioned and called. And I am waiting for the strength in you to be revealed. 
the theme that God repeats over and over is that in our weakness, we find what? God's strength. In the place that you don't want Him to walk, He waits to show you how deep His glory is. In the moments that we are sure there is no relief from the Midianites when they have stolen our crops for seven years, God says, I'm sending someone to remind you of who I am and who you are, mighty warrior. If you know the story of Gideon, you know that as he goes into battle against the Midianites, God actually strips away more of his army. How many men does Gideon take, uh, does Gideon have when he takes the Midianites? How many men? 300. And God actually takes some of the others he had away. Because God says, I want you to know that your weakness is my strength. That the mighty warrior within you is because of my spirit. I want you to know that you are not called to stay there. And my love for you is so deep that I will not leave you. The Hebrews text says that God has spoken to us through the prophets, right? But now how is God speaking to us according to the Hebrews text? It's not just through Gideon, it's through whom? Through the person of Jesus Christ, who has done the work of the forgiveness of sins that allow you and I to be freed. And because we know this living Lord, because he died on the cross for you and for me, hereby I commission you to go forth and be a part of the freedom and the peace and the justice of a new world. Over and over and over again, God meets us in the places where we don't want to be met, takes us from the weakness we don't want to talk about, reminds us of his faithfulness year after year, and commissions us forward with purpose. You are here on this day for a reason. Because there is work to do in your heart and in your head. And in this world, as we move into the next year, my question to you is what weakness is God working in that you may find his strength? What places are you being sent out? And what voices are convincing you that he's not real? Because he still is talking to us. I invite you to bow your heads. And in this next song, you're welcome to come to the rail and talk to the Lord, sit in your seat. But we are entering a new year, a new season, a new time. And we are called to remember who God is and to yield to the next places we are gifted to be led. for a miracle heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel a child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of her oh come oh to the light.
down.